Our Gospel reading is from the Gospel according to St. John, the second chapter. On the third day, a wedding took place in Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Dear woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, My time has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, Now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so. And the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings out the choice wine first and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. This is the word of God for you and for me, the people of God. Thanks Thanks be be to God. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ, I'd like to thank you on behalf of my family, those of you who are friends, our fellow church members, family, for coming and celebrating in this event. This event is about a celebration, about saving the best that God has given us in life, in marriage, and in commitment, and in love. Jesus tells us in the gospel that this is a big event. This is a wedding. This is a family event. It's also a party and a celebration. What we are about this afternoon and celebrating a 50th anniversary is a party and a celebration. And it reminds us that marriage itself is a blessing from God. We don't talk about that as much as we should. It is really kind of a sacrament, a special gift of God that God gives us. We don't talk about that much today. When we talk about marriage today, we talk about it really as kind of almost the impossible institution. Marriage seems to be something that just can't survive given the confusion of modern life. The modern world is just too much for an old-fashioned institution like marriage. No one in this church today has not known or in some way suffered the consequences of problems associated with marriage. We all feel that pain. Marriage begins to even, some people try to redefine it. The Supreme Court did not help us last Thursday and its own decision making. But in 50 years together, in the institution that God gave us, Red and Ann Sheik show us that marriage is a sign that all things are possible in Christ. And there's a few lessons that we can learn as God's children, where we are divorced, whether we're married, whether we're single, that God gives us some messages from this scripture and from 50 years of marriage that we can celebrate together this afternoon. The first lesson our Lord teaches us and that mom and dad teach us in 50 years of marriage is that of overcoming. That with God, we can overcome anything. Here we are at a wedding in a world very different from our own where if you didn't have wine, you couldn't have a wedding. If it wasn't a party, nobody was going to come. And there was no wine. The biggest obstacle to having a wedding, to having a celebration, had been placed upon all the folks there. And if they didn't have that party, if they didn't have what they needed, they couldn't have it. Anne and Red Cheek overcame and have overcome and will have more obstacles to overcome if life 
is the same as it is for most of the rest of us. They came from somewhat different backgrounds. And our grandfather, Richard Clinch, from Oneida, New York, in a very rough family, and um, made it to North Carolina. Marie Berry, her mother from Burke County in the mountains of North Carolina. Father was a train engineer. William Spencer Cheek, dad's father from uh, Yadkin County, and then dad's mother, Evie Cheek, Evie um, Mason from um, uh, Wilkes County. But in the combination of those families came a man and a woman with three qualities that I think deserve celebration. The first one of those is mountain good sense, for lack of any other term of knowing what is right, knowing what is good, and then doing it. That second quality I would celebrate would be self-restraint. Morality, knowing what's right and truly right and doing it. The third quality is love. Now love is a much abused term in our world today. Everything's love. I'm not talking about the love of primetime television. But the love, there are four kinds of love in the New Testament. There's the primetime television love, and then there's on the other extreme, agape love, which means sacrificing yourself for a higher goal, a higher purpose. Mom and Dad met in 1949 at Henderson's Grocery. Apparently, Mom and my grandma were buying some chicken feed. And Dad felt sorry for him carrying a 50-pound bag of chicken feed. And he helped, uh, helped him put, load up the bag. Um, they didn't get married immediately. Daddy uh, got called into the Army. You know, Uncle Sam has that habit every once in a while. Of when he needs some help from his friends, he has this wonderful device that we still have and don't think about very much called the draft. He got drafted, uh, but they were married 18 July 1953. They didn't choose to get married the way we think about reasons we should get married today, for self-fulfillment, or because somebody arranged our marriage, or because it was convenient. They got married because they really loved each other, and we celebrate that love this afternoon. Honesty, hard work, and love uh, can help you overcome anything. Well, how does that overcoming manifest itself, this first lesson? I remember from a very little boy, we used to live down in Winston-Salem, some of y'all remember this address, some of our dear friends, 214 North Elm Drive. And they had one phone in those days, not 20 or 30 as we have in the house these days. One phone, one black rotary dial phone. And every time it would ring and mom would call dad or dad would call mom, they would always end their phone call with I love you. It wasn't just an accident, it wasn't something that was obligatory, it was something from the heart every single time. And I noticed that even today, that when we call each other, we say that. A kind of devotion, a kind of symbolization that is very, very important. 